Hello there, this is Brother Birch. In this video, I am going to uh, set up or demonstrate how to set up a new node project, how to set up all of the API documentation through Swagger with it. Um, and this is going to be a design first or top down uh, focus. So I'm not going to be generating the Swagger documentation like I, I have shown previously, but this time we'll be creating them from scratch. And so as you guys start your next projects, um, you know, you're going to write up the API documentation for it. Um, and the final project in this class, you'll have to write up the API documentation completely first. And so that's what I did uh, right here. And so let me show you a little bit. I kind of wrote down the steps of, that I took. All right, so going through this, uh, first off, I picked out an idea. And so the idea that I had was uh, a website where users can log in and basically create a professional portfolio. They can include work experience and education experience and references and skills and uh, a few other things. Um, and so basically anyone can access a profile if it's public and uh, if a person logs in and they can edit their profile. After I was working on it, I'm like, wow, this is kind of like social media pages, you know, anyways. Um, but so that's, so that's what I'm doing, right? So I planned out what I wanted the data to look like. Now for me doing that, uh, I kind of just threw a bunch of stuff together, right? I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wanna let the user kind of choose a theme. Um, I'm gonna have like username, password, email, phone number, current location. Open to opportunities, true or false. Is the profile public? Uh, which theme they're using? And then we'll have uh, an array of experience items, an array of education items, an array of projects, an array of skills, just strings, and then uh, an array of references. Right? And so I just kind of threw this together. After that, um, I actually split these up into JSONs, right? And so uh, I basically used that same, uh, that same outline, but I put it in JSON. And so I included a link in here. Uh, let me just copy this and open it up. JSONEditoronline.org. This is actually really helpful, right? Because I had the plan for what I wanted to do, and I could just start doing it. And if I have like an error in here, it'll show me that I have an error and it'll tell me why. And so it was really helpful just kind of like putting together a rough draft of, of what my data was gonna look like. Okay, uh, next up, uh, I went here. Uh, so this is to convert sample JSON to Swagger uh, schemas. And so if we look over here, um, I could put in basically a JSON object and it'll output what the Swagger schema will look like. And so in my Swagger file, and I can actually show you guys here in the browser, um, all of my schemas I put down here. So like you can see, here's my user schema. Well, this was just output from, uh, from this guy, right? I put in the JSON of, that I made and then it outputted this. Okay, it worked out, it worked out really great. Let me talk about this little web page right here. Uh, this is called Swagger Hub. Uh, the link to that, oh man, where is it? Uh, oh, it's right here, app.swaggerhub.com. And once you sign in, then you can have like a bunch of different projects and stuff. I started from uh, the pet template and then I kind of just modified it because I haven't done a lot of Swagger before. And so I wanted that template just to be like, okay, that's how they did a URL parameter or, or something like that, right? But this was really nice because I could look over here and I could see exactly what all the models looked like and what all is being included. I could see what the user looked like and I could really like drill into this, into each piece of this, right? And if something didn't look right, then I could just go in and be like, okay, I gotta change what that looks like. Um, same thing with all the requests, right? I could look at one of these requests. I could look at this text. I could search for it if I didn't know where it was in this file. It's pretty big. Um, and like reorder things and, and change where things were at. And so it was really, really nice working with this. Um, I tried to export it a few times and it wasn't exporting the updated version. Totally have to hit save. It does not automatically save. So fair warning there. Um, but anyways, this was just awesome, right? Because it had a bunch of examples that I could work with. And then I just cleaned it up and added and, and modified some to look like mine, what I, what I wanted mine to look like. Okay, so a fair, a fair amount of thought had to go into this. Um, after I downloaded it, I did end up making some more changes. Um, and by that point, I just... I just made the changes here um, in the file that I had downloaded. And so I'll show you guys those changes here in a little bit. But um, so to start off my code, uh, a lot of this I actually just pulled from the um, from my last project, right? Uh, but one thing I did want to change, I wanted to use Mongoose, 
okay? Um, I had a really structured outline of what I wanted my data to look like, and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna use Mongoose. And Mongoose does that. With Mongoose, you can't just throw anything into your database. It has to match um, your Mongoose schema, right? And so if I look at what a theme looks like, here it is, that has a theme name, which is a string, a font size, a string, font family, string, sorry, number font size, okay? And then an array of colors. And if I look at the user, nice and big, right? But again, I didn't, I didn't make this. It was, it was just generated for me. I just Googled JSON to um, mongoose schema, and it worked great. Uh, I think there was one issue with this mixed type. I had to Google this. The one that it gave me was just mixed like that, and it didn't work. Anyways, um, so that so I am using mongoose. Because of that, my controllers are actually a little bit different, right? I can just say um, this is coming from mongoose, from that theme model, and then I can just say uh, theme.find give it a parameter that I want it to find it by. and uh, Like when I want to save a user, for example, uh, it's just user.save, and then I can do whatever I want to, right? And so the way that it's implemented is a little bit different, but it's actually really, really nice to do it like this. I think it's a little bit more straightforward. Um, and having the models in place is also really helpful. Now, you guys don't have to use Mongoose, uh, but I wanted to show you this because in my last project, I didn't use Mongoose. And so now between the two, um, you have an idea of, of how it works, okay? Um, so if I look at my server.js file, uh, it's pretty sh it's pretty short. Um, I'm requiring the models, and then we have db.mongoose, connect, and then we'll listen. Otherwise, we'll say we can't connect to the database. Uh, we go into our routes file. This is the only one referenced from index. I said, hey, let's go ahead and use Swagger, and then we'll have a user route and a theme route. I might end up changing this eventually. We'll see. Um, and so Swagger looks just like that, same as in the previous project. Theme, I just have a single route just to get the theme data from a theme name, okay? And then user.js, I implemented three routes so far and I have several more that I need to do for this project, but I'm just getting started. Uh, to get all users, uh, to get a user by username and to create a new user. Okay, so let me show you, let me show you guys what this looks like. I've been debugging this entire time. Uh, my Launch.json looks like this, okay? Um, this was just, I just said add configuration to the launch.json, I hit node, and it's been working great. So just so you guys know. So it's listening on 8080, so I'm gonna go to localhost 8080, and here's my project. Uh, but if we look at the Swagger routes, we have this beautiful API docs, okay? And so I'm gonna go to API docs, and here we go. So I organize, I organize these by uh, types. We have theme and user. And the rest of these are user, but they weren't implemented yet. And so I'm like, man, if I'm like working with a front end team or something, I want them to know which ones are done and ready to go and which ones they need to mock up um, and, don't have, and, don't, and don't return anything yet. Okay, so I have a couple of these that are ready to go. Uh, I think I only have one theme name. But if we look at this, it says each theme has a unique name. It's kind of treated like an ID. We're going to return um, a theme, basically, and then a 400 if it fails. Okay, so I'll hit try it out. And I think I said like Nike theme for the name on that one. And yeah, that totally worked, okay? And it returned um, my Nike theme. And if we look in, in my database there, oh, wow, it's right there, okay? Um, so that one's looking good. I'll just collapse that, go to my next one. Get all users, don't need any parameters for this one. I'll just say get everything. It shows the request that was sent. And so I could put the same thing into my browser URL, right? Or into, I, I, this is basically just replacing a REST client, but um, shows what it responded with. Looks like I only have one user in there. Um, pretty sure that's accurate because I just kind of cleaned out everything. Yep, just one, okay. Uh, a lot of work to do, right? Passwords aren't hashed or anything. and. But I just wanted to show you guys the implementation of getting the project set up and getting it set up with Swagger um, so that other teams could, you know, so that a front end group could see this and be like, oh yeah, that's, that, this is what we have to do. We have to send a username to get a user and, and so forth. And this is the data we're gonna get back, right? Because if you're working with an API that hasn't been made yet, you need to know how to code the front end, you know, what the data is gonna look like. Um, and so that's one really important piece of contracts. Okay, next up, let's go ahead and create a user. 
it says what we need so I'll go ahead and just say Sarah and I'll say sweet password and we'll go ahead and try to execute this and it shows our requests and it shows our response okay notice that it kind of added all this stuff it built that user schema that I declared um, off of her username and password so we have this whole object that comes back and so if I go and look into the in, in the database you can see her profile is all set up and ready to go it's just empty right but it's all templated and, and ready to go um, 201 was, re was returned and I basically want this response to match exactly uh, what was expected down here okay um, next up get user by username so let's see it says username is a string and it's required the name that needs to be fetched success will give you a 200 with their user object and a 400 or a 404 okay and so if I put in Nathan and hit execute you can see we got a 200 and oh that's interesting response body is empty I probably have like Nathan Birch oh it says Nathan Birch okay well let's try that again I should probably fix what that looks like instead of just being empty we could fix that on the front end there we go there's my data so anyways, um, so that's what that looks like, right? Now, if I want to publish this, which I do, um, this isn't gonna work because my local host, if I was gonna copy this and put it in a new tab, HTTP, guess what Heroku uses? Not HTTP, okay? So I'm gonna go to heroku.com, and I actually haven't set this up, so this will be good. I'm gonna log into my account. I'm gonna need GitHub open as well. Oh good, this is it. I'm gonna copy, so I think I can just search for it. Okay, I'm gonna make a new project, create new app, and I'll say portfolio builder, create app. Oh, well, we'll say birch portfolio builder, that's fine. Okay, and then I'll say connect to GitHub, uh, portfolio, we can just search for that and the back end, that's what I want to do. Okay, uh, choose a branch to deploy to. It is called main, so I'll leave that as main and I'll enable automatic deploys. So let's go ahead and deploy our first thing. Notice I have this proc file already in here from the last project, web node server.js. That's what I want to run because that's where my, my, um, my listener is. My env file is ready to go, so I'm gonna have to set up my config variables because this env file won't get pushed up to GitHub. I don't want my user, my database stuff and password <laughs> pushed up to GitHub. Okay, so one thing that I do wanna do though, if I look in the Swagger design, um, this is gonna have to change. Uh, when I push this up, mm, let's see here, we're gonna use HTTPS on Heroku. And then this, instead of being localhost 8080, is going to be, oh, let me just hit open app, that'll work. There we go, okay, and that's what I'll use there, except I think we take out that HTTPS chunk. Okay, we'll see, we'll give it a shot. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and push that up, which will trigger a deploy for us. I'll say pushing Swagger, uh, or Swagger JSON to Heroku. And sync changes. Okay. Meanwhile, let me go ahead and set up that config vars. I'll show you guys how to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna make this nice and small just so you guys can't see my password. That's the only reason why I'm doing this. Okay, maybe not that small. I'll make this bigger. There we go. That'll be great. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here. Man, I'm all paranoid. I'm gonna like pull this thing up. Okay, I'm glad I paused it to pull it up. <laughs> okay, so, but this is what it looks like, right? It just says MongoDB URI, and uh, I'm just gonna copy this whole thing. Actually, I'm really just gonna copy after this equal sign. Okay, so I copied that. I'm gonna head back to Heroku. It should be building right now. If we look at activity, or already built. Oh yeah, I already deployed it about one minute ago. Okay, and then I would go into settings, reveal config bars. There's nothing here. 
and we say MongoDB URI, exactly how it was in the um, env file, right? And then this value, I'm going to give it, let me just make that nice and small again. All right, come on, your responsive website. Okay, hang on. I'm just going to pause this, um, but I'm going to paste that value that I copied from here, and I'm just going to hit add. Okay, so I hit add, and then I hit hide config bars so you can't see them, but I did just add that. Um, so hopefully we'll actually be able to see our website and connect to a database. Hey, that looks good. I mean, it's a back-end website, right? Uh, I should be able to say user. Good, it pulled up all my users, great. And we should have that API docs route. Beautiful. Okay, let's give this a shot. I just wanna try these here. I wanna make sure that these work. So I'm gonna say Nike theme. And totally did not work. Let's see here. Let's look at this. Oh, look at that. Two forward slashes. Okay, so I just need to modify my JSON file, my Swagger JSON file, to not include that trailing forward slash. Okay, and then we should be good to go. So let me push that up. Alrighty, my build just finished. I'm gonna hit open app. I'll close my other open one, and we'll try this from scratch. Our API docs. And let's go ahead and test one of our routes. If one of them works, then we can safely assume that all of them do. Famous last words. Nike theme. There we go. Look at that. Connected beautifully. Okay, that looks better. All right, we'll just try a post real fast. Let's go ahead and just create a new user. I'll just say internet user. Pass one two three four, classic, and we'll hit execute, and we got a two hundred one, which looks good. I should be able to look at my database, and hit refresh, and there's our internet user. Okay, so I think we're good to go. Um, I'll go ahead and post this code for you guys so that you guys can see it. Um, but I hope that this gives you a good starting point, um, and give you an idea of how to set up the Swagger Swagger documentation. Uh, whether you're going to have a front-end team working on it or not and you know just to get used to this process um, and then these ones as I as I kind of phase these out I guess I forgot to show this, this is the last thing I'll show you guys uh, we just have this tags thing and so if I search in here for tags hmm, it's down towards the bottom right there okay uh, we have three tags and then I could assign different tags to different things. And so if I look for this not yet implemented tag, you can see I just gave this user login that tag. And then it shows up down here. And so anyone else looking at these or trying to test these, whether it be a teacher or a front end team or whatever, they'll know that these ones aren't ready to go, but they can still look at them and see what's required. And they can know what to expect. And so, um, you know, if there was a front end team, they could still work on this and know exactly what to do. and you know, how to put a user and what would come back and how to use that and, and everything. So um, so this is an example of design first or top down uh, planning here and development. And so I, it's, it's been great. Swagger's awesome. So uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. But I hope this helps. And again, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll push this up to GitHub and I'll share it with you guys. So uh, yeah, good luck with your projects.